everybody. It's earlier today, <laughs> which makes me super happy because I might get to go to bed on time. So the reason I do these videos for the most part, or I've been doing them at night, is because it, where my computer is in my house, there, it's, it's always a hub of activity with, it's right there by the kitchen and the dining room. I don't have a separate office. Hey, Patty. And um, so I, I usually wait until everybody goes to bed, which can be a little bit late. You know, the boys have a regular bedtime, but Shane is, is unpredictable. So anyway, tonight I decided, you know what? That's not working out. It's not helping me get to bed on time. Hi. Hey, Ray. Um, hi, Kelsey. And uh, so I thought, you know what, that I have to change it. I can't really change that situation. And um, hey, <laughs> so I have to change what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm, I'm outside and it's a teeny bit of wind. <laughs> Just got to my paper. So anyway, I'm outside, which is perfect because it's beautiful. It's quiet, except you might hear, hi, Megan. Except you might hear the goats and the chickens. <laughs> but I shouldn't really have any interruptions and um, Shane's grilling so I, I smell these brats too that's that could be a little distracting hi Paige um, okay so I am gonna try to make it pretty quick tonight just talking about the sleep cycle and explain and um, what I'm trying to do is research and learn and then in the process of sharing kind of break it down what I call Barney style uh, to help me learn it and to help share it because that's what always gets to me is all the science and trying to remember the specifics. So I'm trying to present it in a way that I can remember and that you can remember and that it's helpful without all the specifics. So I do write about this and there's more details in my blog, but so I'm going to share what I learned about the sleep cycle and what I thought I knew was kind of accurate, but not exactly. I had read or heard a few years back that the sleep cycle was 90 minutes and that it was very beneficial to sleep in increments of 90 minutes. So what I've been doing for years is to count out 90 minutes and try to make that work. So as opposed to maybe sleeping, um, I don't know, I don't really wanna do the math right now, but say I had six 90 minute slots. If, if I was supposed to wake up maybe a half hour shy of that, I would either go to bed sooner or, or sleep later to kind of calculate it. So where I'd actually be getting woken up, waking myself up in a, after a 90 minute period, because that's what I thought was that full cycle. Um, and so there, that's true to some extent I learned, but it's not quite like that. And, uh, Still, the recommendation is saying between seven to nine hours of sleep for an uh, adult, you know, for optimal health. It does vary based on genetic and age, but most people, their window is that within that seven to nine hours. Um, so anyway, the way this cycle works, it's described a little bit differently, but in general, it's there's REM sleep and then there's non-REM sleep. And then within the non-REM, there are up to four different stages that were described. So I'm gonna start with the REM because that's the sleep where you are dreaming. That's the only stage where you're dreaming. And I always thought that that was that super deep kind of sleep. And that's not necessarily true. So it is the sleep in which if you, if they did a um, EKG of your brain, it's the actually most like when you're awake. That, the stage where you're dreaming. And so they say your brain is alert and awake, but sometimes that your muscles go into kind of a paralysis. And some scientists say it's maybe because to protect you so that you're not acting out your dreams. Um, <laughs> yes, it varies on how many chickens, that's true, and how loud they are and when they wake up. And if you have roosters, so no roosters here. <laughs> oh, Caddy, that's funny. So that REM part of the cycle um, it's named REM for the rapid eye movement that can occur. And so the non-REM goes through the different stages. So you kind of have a lighter sleep to start with that can vary, but it's when you're first falling asleep, it's pretty light. Um, 
your body temperature decreases a little bit, your body slows down, um, and then you go beyond that and you go into a lighter sleep, which your heart rate's slowing down, um, you're beginning to get into that total relaxation, and then you go into two more stages that are kind of together. It's a deep sleep stage where it's slow wave sleep, and the first part of it, you could have these delta slow waves where, um, for the most part of it. And if you would wake up during this part, you're really groggy and confused. Like it's that really deep kind of sleep. Um, and it, it says it only lasts for about five to 15 minutes for each of those. And then after that, you would go into that delta wave only. Um, and that's when it's really difficult to wake you for kids that might be when they're wetting the bed um, or for maybe having night terrors. It's that very, very hard to wake deep, deep sleep. And it really, it doesn't last very, it, it says it could be about an hour. And then as you cycle, the cycles of that kind of sleep decrease, and then the cycles of REM sleep can increase so that your final cycle of the REM could be a little bit longer, even though the first ones are shorter. So I, I don't know if I explained that well, like my goal is to draw, so... That's about all. That's about what I got. Uh, but anyway, I found it very interesting. And I do think learning the sleep cycles and understanding that within that 90 minute window, even if that's not, you know, the, if that's that basic only way, you still can help yourself get a better night of sleep by understanding the cycles. Um, and if you're, I, I always try to do this. I think when I wake up the best is without an alarm. So I sort of set my alarm as the worst case scenario. So my alarm would be the when I have to wake up and that's 6 a.m. for me. That's when I really need to be up. I like to be up earlier and I usually wake up earlier than that. Um, anywhere between 4.30 and before six. And I kind of in my head, I think that's because when my cycles are ending. And so, hey, Johnny, how are you? Um, so that's it. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I will say that I'm a good sleeper. I can fall asleep easily. I, I choose. It's a horrible choice I've been doing. But I have been studying and reading so much about this that I'm pretty much getting scared into submission. Like, I am ready to try harder to get the amount of sleep I need. And um, so if you're like me and you're just sort of stubborn and not sleeping uh, long enough or well enough by choice, uh, I encourage you to kind of learn more about it or just believe me, just trust me and try to sleep more because it is really important and I'm definitely going to try harder. So. I would love if you kind of dropped a note, you sent me a message. If you are one of those people like me who's not doing as well as you should, because trust me, uh, there's so much that depends on the amount of sleep you get. And I used to think I was just one of those special people, but I learned more about those special people and I'm going to share that tomorrow. <laughs> there are very few of them. And um, so anyway, let's all get our Z's. Thank you for listening. I'd love to hear what you think and if any of this helped you. Oh, there's my honey. All right. Have a great night and um, I will see you tomorrow. Check back for more information about sleep. Bye.